Hello everybody. Over the last couple of days, I have tried to learn how to add SPICE models to Fusion 360 electronics designs. And boy, that was frustrating because as most things Fusion 360 electronics, it seems to be more of an afterthought and the documentation is rather poor and also the available tutorials seem to be either incomplete or long-winded. So what I have learned over the last couple of days, I wanted to show in this video. So let's get started. Okay, so what I have here is a very simple circuit with a resistor and an LED and a power supply. And if I select all of those components here and say add spice model, gives me this little warning here and I say okay, I can see that most of all my components have no spice model associated with them as indicated by those red explanation marks here. So the first thing I can do, if I just go out of here and I right click on my resistor, Fusion is identifying this component here as a resistor. And in this case, this is correct. And I can just say map. And it gives me some pins here for a resistor. This doesn't matter. But more importantly, if I go under the load model tab here, it says this is an intrinsic device. And an intrinsic device does not need any further user input. We can just accept it as is. So I can say OK and done. And now my resistor here has a SPICE model associated with it. Another way to add a SPICE model to a resistor would actually be to directly add it in the library. And of course, if I add a SPICE model in the library, then whenever I import my part from a library, then the SPICE model is already there. So let's do that as well. Essentially, I click on here, I say Edit Library, and then here is my library. And then I can actually click on my device here, and simply up here I can say Add SPICE model, and again, it recognizes this component as a resistor and makes the right suggestion here. I could go in here and then change this, as that would not be the right one. But since it is the right one, I simply say add and add and done, and I will save my library. So now whenever I import this resistor from my library, this will already have a SPICE model in it. Now I can close out of my library here. The same thing is true for the power source. So I can click on my power source. And I can say add spice model and it identifies this one here as an independent power source. And I can say okay. And in this case, obviously, it is important now that my plus sign is on the plus and my minus sign is on the minus sign of my symbol. And I again can say okay and I'm done with it. All right. So those are those two components. And then for the LED, if I right click on my LED and say add model, it also actually identifies this as a diode. But if I click on map, you can see now here this model type is a model card. And a model card, we need to load a model. So and in this case, the, the model which we can associate with the diode is, well, I saved it here in my example folders, is this DMOD MDL model, which comes with Fusion. And you have to dig on your C drive to find this file. So somewhere deep, deep inside of the uh, file structure. So best thing is just to search your entire C drive for this particular model here. And I can click on here and I can again say OK. And now I have to make sure that my cathode is the negative one and my anode is the positive one. And I can say OK and done. And now my diode also has a spice model associated with it. So then if I want to run a simulation, I actually have to set up my voltage source here. So I click on here and I make this an analog source. And if I want uh, to simulate anything somewhat interesting, I might want to maybe make this a sinusoidal function here. And I can give it an amplitude of 2.5 volts and also an offset of 2.5 volts. And I can say, OK. I also need to give my resistor a value. So again, I can either click my value sign up here and give my resistor a value. Let's say 250 ohm is fine to, to simulate. So I can just click on simulation here. The simulation type I want is a transient simulation. I want to start at zero seconds and I want to go all the way to three seconds. I don't know if I've talked about this, but when I set up my frequency on my power supply, the frequency was set to one hertz. So we should say three cycles here. And then if I want to simulate, I also have to put on a voltage probe to identify what part of my circuit I'm actually interested in. So I set a voltage probe here. And if I then say simulate, I have to set my simulation to transient. Otherwise, it will be just a single point. And I need to tell him what is the start time and what is the end time of my simulation. 
So I didn't talk about those when I set up my voltage source, but the voltage source has a frequency of one hertz. So between zero and three seconds, I should see three cycles and then I can start to simulate. And this is what we see here where we get rid of the current here. There you can see my voltage is clamped to 700 millivolts, which is indicative of a silicon diode. So that's actually is already one problem which most tutorials don't talk about because I can actually modify what type of diode I want to use here. And for that, I have to go back into where I map my SPICE model to my component. So let me close this one out. So I can right click on here again, go to my SPICE model, go to my diode, go to map, and then here where it says dot model D mod D, I can put some modifiers on here. And they are here. I will put them into this description. So for example, here is for a red, for a green, and for a blue diode. And maybe I'm grabbing the green diode here. So I need to grab those parameters here and simply copy them behind my diode model. I also need to get rid of some of those formatation signs here. They're just coming from copying. They will not be recognized and say, okay, done, done. And then I can re-simulate. And if you then look here now at our forward voltage, we see now the forward voltage is 2.2 volt, which is more realistic for a green or yellow LED. So there is one problem I haven't quite been able to solve yet. And that is if we go back to the library, right? I can go into here and I can actually add the spice model to the library, just like we have done for the uh, transistor like so. However, in my library, I have many variants of uh, diodes under the LEDs here. And unfortunately, I can only associate one single SPICE model with a component and not a SPICE model with each variant of my component. And hence, I will always have to go back in here and manually change the SPICE model depending on what color LED I pick out of here. Or of course, you also could organize your library in a way where each color LED is its separate component, but this is somewhat inconvenient. Anyhow, if, if anybody has a solution for it, please uh, leave a comment, that would be great. Close it and let's make a new circuit here by actually getting a couple more components. So let's add another voltage source right here. Move my diode up here a little bit. Oops. LED, you can stay here. That looks good enough. And let's actually get a transistor from here and put our transistor into our network. Okay. One more connected to the gate here. Maybe all this is pretty enough. My OCD will not allow me to stop here. There we go. Uh, and now we can also add a spice model to this transistor here. But before I do so, let me just go back into the diode here and point something out. Because if you go onto map here and you look up here, it says model type, model card. And model cards are components where you actually have to uh, load a model and where you can do some modifications to it. But for the transistor here, actually, I want to go and use a model from a manufacturer. So I can actually, first of all, show you one model I have downloaded from from On Semiconductor. So if I go to On Semiconductor on their website and I simply search for the model number with Spice, I'm getting this uh, download link here. And if I download this link, you will see it will save it as a, a dot mod file. So I can just save this wherever. And then if I click on my transistor and I go to add Spice model. It, again, it identifies this one as a bipolar junction transistor. I also could set this to a MOSFET transistor here, but this actually will not work with models from manufacturer. What we actually have to do, we need to use the sub circuit. And then if I can go to sub circuit, I can again click on here, say import model, and then the models which it understands are MDL circuit and lib. So what I actually found, if I simply Go into my temp drive here again and just change the file name to lib and then go into import here, temp. I can actually 
import the file. And if I click OK now, I actually get a warning. And the warning is the number of pins on the part three must match the number of pins on the model definition, which is six. And if you go into our model definition here, actually what you will see here, this is this sub circuit RFD, uh, the name of our part, and then two, one, and three are the pins. And here, I guess, and in some formats, this one here is considered a comment, which it will not understand. So I simply have to comment this one out. And now I have three pins here. And I say, okay. And now I also have to map those pins to the correct position here. So actually in the, in the file, this is rather helpful here. D is two, G is, and gate is one, and the source is three. So I actually have to switch those two here around and I can say, okay, and done. So with that, I still have to set up my power sources. So let's make this one here actually a pure DC source. So let's make this, I don't know, five seems to be reasonable. And let's make zero and zero. Actually, we can probably do this a none set value. And this one here, we now want to turn into an analog source. Uh, ah, I guess I don't have a spice model with it associated just yet. So I have to first map the source done. And now if I click on here, I see analog source setup. I make this a sinusoidal source. Let's put an offset of 2.5 volts in here, an amplitude of 2.5 volts. The frequency is one hertz. I'm happy with that. I can say, okay. And then again, I can go to simulation and maybe put another voltage probe on here to make this a little bit more clear what is going on. So another voltage probe right here, done, simulate. There we are. Ah, looks pretty good. So whenever our voltage goes above a certain threshold, right, then my transistor turns on and the voltage across this LED here drops to the clamping voltage of this LED of around 2.2 volts. And then obviously when the voltage here drops again, the transistor turns off and just jumps back up to 5 volts, which is the voltage of those power source here. So all that seems to work pretty nicely. So like I said, this was uh, two days of my life, which I will never get back. But if this is helpful for you, then maybe give it a like or even subscribe and uh, goodbye.